Hello XC 2021 Madrid. My name is Mohammed. Today I like to introduce you to our exciting research work on behalf of my co-authors. It was a combined work between IBM CAS and Ryerson University. Our research focuses on anomaly detection in a large scale cloud platform. Here is the outline of our today's presentation. First, I like to give a brief introduction to the problem and our goal. Then we will focus on the highlights of our research challenges. Next, I will describe the architecture and implementation of our proposed solution. After that, I will share the insights and best practices that emerged during our work. Finally, I will describe the applicability of our findings to leverage implementing a generic production grade anomaly detector. We'll start with the current cloud market position along with the problem and our goal. Nowadays, cloud computing is everywhere. Governments and companies are moving their workloads and facilities into the cloud. Therefore, the services are getting increasingly popular. The market value of public cloud services in 2019 was approximately 228 billion US dollars globally. It is predicted to reach around 355 billion by next year with a steady year-over-year -year growth. Cloud platforms under the hood consist of a complex interconnected stack of hardware and software components. Each of these components can fail, which may lead to an outage. In recent years, advanced and automated monitoring systems have been deployed in data centers. However, most existing monitoring systems still depend on statistics and heuristics from observed matrices. Such anomaly detection techniques are less effective in a cloud environment due to cloud platform scale and rapidly changing nature of the workloads. The reduction of efficiency is typically demonstrated by overwhelming false alarms. In this paper, we have discussed the implementation of a deep neural network based production grade real time anomaly detector for IBM, shared its architecture and implementation note, along with the best practices that emerged while evolving the monitoring system. Other researchers and practitioners can leverage them to build anomaly detectors for complex systems. Now, let's focus on the key challenges. The IBM console encompasses core functionality, tying together all parts of IBM Cloud, such as identity and access management, billing, search and tagging, and product catalog. Such a complex monitoring platform demands complete and thorough visibility of the networks, devices, and services in real time or near real time to live up to the agreed SLS high expectations. We dealt with an existing monitoring and notification system that suffered from flooding of false alarms. The high dimensionality and non-linearity of the data made it difficult to use statistical models. The IBM Cloud is a public cloud provides services in more than 60 data centers distributed around the globe. The console is an exciting product geographically deployed across 10 data centers. Microservices in the ecosystem depends on API from nearly every part of the platform, as well as the rest of the IBM Cloud. IBM IoT platform SSQ monitors around 120,000 observations per minute. Now let's discuss the architecture of our solution. We designed a layered microservices-based architecture that constructs a scalable and reliable data collection pipeline. The pipeline can collect or pool data from various sources like MSSQ and databases. As shown in the figure, our solution has two composite layers, converter and splitter, and aggregator and modular, for processing online and offline data. This architecture allows us to use microservices and PubSub architecture patterns and offers a good balance between scalability and maintainability due to high cohesion and low coupling of the solution. Furthermore, Asynchronous communication between the layers make the layered architecture a building block for a general architecture for processing any types of streaming data. We choose serverless architecture as our primary infrastructure. It is highly scalable and event-driven architecture and only uses resources when a specific function or trigger occurs. It supports computational resources on demand, which helps to achieve the capacity at pace. Eventually, it helps make the overall solution relatively eco-friendly by maintaining a minimum server and resource footprint. The first composite layer of our architecture is exposed to the outside world for data collection. A RESTful API is designed and implemented and logs can be pushed to this API. 
We monitor the incoming traffic from platform message queue, filter relevant data points, and aggregate periodically in five minutes interval. The features are generated by grouping the response time over unique component ID, REST method, REST status code written by a service, and aggregate statistics to mentioned above. We, had, we also add periodic seasonality features using standard trigonometric transformations. We use GRU-based autoencoder to get the reconstruction error. Historical errors are modeled as normal rolling distribution, and we measure the probability of anomaly by analyzing the distribution of the autoencoder's reconstruction error scores. We leveraged a grid search approach in Compute Canada High Performance Cloud for the hyperparameter tuning of the GRU-based model. The detector sends out the alerts to the appropriate DevOps stream using Slack channels. The Slack message contains a high-level summary of the alert and the count of the anomalous features grouped by platform component groups. It also includes a hyperlink to the detailed report. We have included a mechanism for the direct feedback from the DevOps teams for the reported anomalies in the Slack channel. They have four options, as you can see in the figure, to choose from anomaly, anomaly but no impact, not an anomaly, and I am not sure. The detailed report contains a textual description of the anomalous feature and the graphical representation. As example of such a graph shows, the anomalous aggregated feature along with the raw data points for the previous 48 hours. The analyst can compare the feature's historical behavior with the recent anomalous one, shown on the right-hand side of the plot. The top two panes shows the anomalous behavior, API 1. We can see a gap in the data arrival, which has not happened in the past. In the API 2 case, the calls to the API happened periodically in the past, but always resulted in a single spike. But for the anomalous period, we see a continuous request pattern. In the bottom, three pens. Now I'd like to share the insights and best practices that emerge. Analysis of anomalies from multiple data centers helps to understand whether the issue is localized, that is confined to a specific data center and can be mitigated by redirecting request to another data center, or the problem is global one where a failover will not help. Anomaly detection feature further helps to identify denial of service attacks as they easily detectable by anomalies related to spike in the count statistics. The 20 minutes head heads up offered by the model may not sound like much. However, to put things into perspective, SLA with 99.999% uptime allows approximately five minutes of downtime per year. Thus, 20 minutes of extra time gives DevOps streams an extra wiggle room that is appreciated. Serverless architecture enables auto-scaling. This helps cope with the changing pattern in the log record arrival. We need to make sure that the workload on which the anomaly detector is being tested resembles the workload of the environment that the detector will monitor in production. While we have online retraining, we still need to do batch retraining periodically as new features coming from newly deployed services and APIs frequently appear in the cloud environment. We found that six hours interval was adequate for our needs. The solution, learning process, and the best practices can be used with other data types as long as they can be mapped to a numerical scale. Now we can reflect to our original goal and achievement. In this paper, we investigated the challenges that IBM DevOps teams are facing, that is finding a reliable and scalable monitoring system for IBM Cloud Platform, which contains thousands of components. We proposed to solve the challenge by designing and implementing an automated real-time deep neural network-based anomaly detector, which alerts the DevOps teams via Slack. The solution is monitoring the console's production environment of the IBM Cloud Platform for the last one year. It detects complex anomalies in multi-dimensional time series up to 20 minutes earlier than the previous monitoring solution, and significantly lowered the false alarm rate. Therefore, we have designed and implemented a reliable and scalable production gap monitoring system for IBM Cloud Platform. For further details, please read our paper and feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay, I guess uh, we are live. Welcome uh, everybody. It is uh, now time uh, to ask questions to all those four presenters that decided to join us. So first of all, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I encourage the audience uh, to write their questions on the chat system. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I can ask uh, some basic questions so that uh, people better understand the background of the river and come up uh, with their own questions. So uh, the first question is, uh, what is uh, an anomaly in, uh, in your context, in your paper? Thank you uh, for the question. And here we are actually measuring the performance of the cloud system, uh, like uh, um, we are monitoring thousands of microservices and systems and their response times, and whether we see any unusuality based on the normal situation. So that we have to define what is normal. So we have a, a larger window that we are considering as so it took roughly one month worth of data. And then based on that knowledge, uh, if some deviation happens, that should be uh, notified by the uh, detector to the operation teams. It's not like just a single spike. It could be spike, which is easier to detect. It could be some other changes, you know, uh, that should be notified so that people can take initiative before the actual outage or disaster happens. So this is what we mean. So uh, I've seen that uh, in your paper, you provide uh, some uh, findings uh, analyzing the IBM uh, uh, software. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you think uh, are the boundaries of your results? So in other words, do you think uh, that uh, you will find similar results in other contexts? And so which contexts are somehow similar? And which other context do you think are different? Of course, this is about speculating. It's not about discussing the, the results you had because this is what you had. Mm -hmm. But if you had to discuss, you know, uh, a domain or a context where your result clearly won't apply, and another context where you you believe that your result uh, would very likely apply, what would context would be? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Andromansky, if you please. Speculation is my domain. Um, it is a good question. Uh, and as with any speculation, right, take it with a grain of salt. Um, so realistically, any um, time series that can be represented numerically, multi-dimensional time series, uh -huh. theoretically should be applicable to feed into this tool. Now, we know that there are some anomalies that are easy to detect and some that are much harder. So like the obvious thing is like spikes or say, you know, before you had say CPU utilization of 100%, suddenly it went to zero. Okay, well, kind of sad. up, down, spike, down, spike. This is easy one. And it in that particular context, it is applicable to anything, be it a transaction rate, be it CPU, be it memory, be it some other feature, maybe even outside of the IT domain. The other ones are becoming more subtle, uh, where so you have, say, clusters of volatility happening. Those typically we can detect as well. Um, so at least this two, anything that fits into this you know, abstract uh -huh. mathematical profile is going to work definitely fine. Outside of this domain, it, it really depends. So until you feed in the, the vectors uh -huh. in and see uh -huh. what happens, you don't know. And this is precisely why for most of this work, you really need the feedback of the actual AI ops team, so the, the operation team, uh, who can say, yep, you know, this anomaly makes sense to us, this one you missed, and this is garbage and should be discarded. And when you have the feedback loop in place, then you can tune the model accordingly. Uh, if you don't, then it's a little bit of a garbage in, garbage out situation. Mm -hmm. So my next question again is uh, pretty general. So what are the next steps? Since uh, you haven't described enough in the in the paper, so I was curious. Uh, uh, how do you think? Uh, if you can uh, provide a little spoiler, uh, uh, how would you proceed from this starting point? Or you or other researchers? Mohammed, do you want me to answer this one? Okay, so I mean, 
there's kind of two, at least two prones or uh, that we can explore. So one being uh, scale it up to additional components. So right now we look at IBM Cloud Platform, which is uh -huh. a layer that's kind of like a UI that the customer sees. Uh -huh. So expand it to other components, see what's going to happen. Uh, you know, will this approach hold as we increase the number of dimensions or should we do something different? Because as we know, you know, as things start to scale, sometimes you get some weird nonlinear perturbations. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other being try to apply to different domains, as that as you suggested, uh, you know, just see if you can take the same black box, plug it into a different domain, and see if it works. So both would be very very interesting. All right. For us, and hopefully for the community as well. Okay. So we have uh, the first question from Tim, huh? and Tim is asking, what is the life cycle of these anomaly detection driven alerts? I can imagine an operations team getting deluded by these alerts that are not linked to specific slow violations or specific guidance for how to debug. My team has moved to only alerting on potential slow violation and then moving to identifying the culprit service to cut down on on-call toil. Um, so it, it, it is a very good question. and. Um, it actually relates to another paper that we had a couple of years ago where another IBM team, they were overwhelmed with the, mom, the number of false alerts that this automatic systems were generating to the point where people basically started ignoring them because if you have, you know, 50 alerts coming uh, in 10 minutes, and there's no way you can actually uh, explore all of them. So one of the key points for this one was to make sure that so the number of false alerts emitted is low, and typically we don't see more than one an hour, often less. So that's enough for people to pay attention to them. And then the life cycle goes, so the Slack message pops up, uh, someone from the IOPS team explores it. There is this feedback little form where they say, you know, yes, this is true alert or false alert or don't know sometimes. Um, then they go investigate. Well, actually, typically the button will be pressed after the finished investigation, of course. But someone will look into it. Now, there's actually other uh, type of channels. So we're not the only source of alerts. Uh, we plan in the future to kind of aggregate it into one unified pipeline. Now they have three or four different dash, uh, like alert dashboards that the team monitors. And then eventually, yeah, once uh, alert is resolved, then you you can get some feedback. So hopefully that that answers the question. That's a really good one. Thank you. Okay, there are uh, no other questions, and I don't have uh, any other questions. So let's wait uh, for the audience to come up uh, uh, with uh, some other questions. Otherwise, we can discuss uh, what are the main takeaways for researchers. Uh, you know, so if I need to start uh, now, uh, so what would be the main takeaway? What if I would live my life all over? What would I have done differently? Eh? Um, so, um, I mean, there's the standard issue when dealing with large uh, enterprise-grade system, right? So uh -huh. here, um, the software distributed among 20 plus data centers. So just dealing with the volumes and the hooking into the pipeline and because if someone gives you a file and says okay here's the time series go find out the anomalies good for you right so that's relatively straightforward here you actually had to massage it make sure that it fits into the, the enterprise pipeline uh -huh. that it is useful for ai ops obviously so for that this ai ops tool is useful for the devops team okay too many buzzwords um and uh, i kind of getting constant feedback um, because like we typically have the bi-weekly meetings uh, with industrial partners and they tell us if we're on the right track or not and we course correct. Because otherwise, you, know, you would, may produce something beautiful from academic perspective, which will be completely useless from <laughs> the perspective uh -huh. of practitioners. So we try to avoid this type of situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I thank you the four uh, presenters that joined us. In a few seconds, there will be a pop-up button to click if you want to continue this cast with the others. Otherwise, hello, everybody.